Millennia ago, the Daxamites unleashed an experiment so vile that it made humans invulnerable killing machines forged in the crucible of relentless alien torment. Will Adams took a long drag on his cigarette as the eccentric billionaire Elias Vanderbilt slid the classified file across the table, revealing the horrifying truth of humanity's engineered origins. Records of the twisted genetic experiment lay hidden on the dark side of the moon in a long-abandoned Daxamite outpost, and unless they retrieved that forbidden knowledge, the worst of humanity would gain the power to conquer the stars and snuff out all who opposed them. The estranged daughter Mia, an astronaut on a secret moon mission, was now a hostage to access the alien base. Her life hung by a thread, and time was running out. Humanity's future teetered on the razor's edge between unthinkable power and utter annihilation, and it all came down to Will's next move. Will cracked his knuckles as he surveyed the three figures standing before him in the dimly lit safe house. Gunny, a battle-hardened marine with a salt and pepper beard, methodically cleaned his sniper rifle. Aiden, a lanky hacker with a mischievous glint in his eye, typed furiously on his laptop. Kira, a lithe infiltrator with raven hair pulled back in a ponytail, sharpened her combat knife. All right, team, here's the deal, Will said, his voice low and urgent. We're going to the moon, Cerberus has my daughter, Mia, and they're after something big in that Daxamite outpost. We need to get there first and stop them. Gunny grunted his acknowledgement, while Aiden looked up from his screen with a grin. Moon mission? Count me in, boss. Kira simply nodded, her dark eyes glinting with determination. The journey to the moon was tense, the small spacecraft filled with a palpable sense of anticipation. As they touched down on the lunar surface, Will felt a sense of unease wash over him. The abandoned outpost loomed ahead, its angular silhouette stark against the starry void. They approached cautiously, weapons at the ready, but the ambush still caught them off guard. Cerberus troops, clad in sleek black armor, erupted from hidden positions, their weapons spitting deadly plasma bolts. Take cover! Will shouted as he dove behind a rocky outcropping. Gunny was already in position, his sniper rifle cracking with precision shots that dropped Cerberus soldiers with each pull of the trigger. Aiden and Kira moved in tandem, their movements fluid and graceful in the low gravity. Kira closed in on the enemy, her knife flashing as she engaged in deadly close-quarters combat. Aiden's fingers danced over his wrist-mounted computer, hacking into the Cerberus comms and sowing chaos in their ranks. Despite their skills, the sheer number of Cerberus troops began to overwhelm them. Will gritted his teeth, knowing they couldn't hold out much longer. Fall back to the outpost, he ordered. They fought their way through the airlock, sealing it behind them. The interior of the outpost was dark and eerily silent. Suddenly a figure emerged from the shadows, a tall, spindly alien with luminous eyes. Vortis, I presume, Will said warily, his weapon trained on the Daxamite. Vortis raised his long-fingered hands in a placating gesture. I mean you no harm, human, but you must listen carefully. As Vortis revealed the shocking truth of humanity's origins and the existence of the limiter device, Will felt a growing sense of dread. The implications were staggering. If Cerberus got their hands on the device, they could create an unstoppable army of superhuman soldiers. An explosion suddenly shook the outpost, dust raining down from the ceiling. Cerberus had breached the entrance. Will knew they were out of time and options. He locked eyes with Vortis. Activate the device, remove the limiters. Vortis hesitated his expression troubled. You do not understand the consequences. Your species will change, evolve beyond recognition. We don't have a choice, Will growled. Do it! As Cerberus troops poured into the control room, Vortis initiated the sequence. The device pulsed with an ethereal light, and Will felt a sudden rush of energy coursing through his body. His senses sharpened, his muscles surged with newfound strength. Around him, Gunny, Aiden, and Kira underwent similar transformations. They unleashed their abilities upon the Cerberus forces, moving with blinding speed and devastating power. Will's fists crushed armor like paper, while Gunny's shots never missed. 
Kira was a blur of lethal motion, and Aiden's hacking skills now extended to the very fabric of reality. In the chaos, Will caught a glimpse of Alexei, Vanderbilt's traitorous head of security, slipping away with the device and a terrified Mia. A surge of rage and desperation filled him, but he was pinned down by enemy fire. As the last Cerberus soldier fell, an eerie silence descended upon the outpost. Will stood amidst the carnage, his chest heaving. They had won the battle, but the war was just beginning. Alexei had the device, and with it, the power to create an army of super-soldiers. Will clenched his fists, feeling the surging power within him. He knew that he and his team were forever changed, but they had no choice. They had to stop Cerberus, no matter the cost, for if they failed, the fate of humanity and the galaxy hung in the balance. In the eerie stillness of the outpost, Will and his team grappled with the reality of their transformed bodies. Gunny flexed his arms, marvelling at the raw power coursing through his muscles. He strode over to a wrecked Cerberus vehicle, gripped the undercarriage and lifted. The twisted metal groaned as the entire hulk of metal rose off the ground. Gunny let out a low whistle. Aiden's eyes glazed over, his consciousness stretching out to the outpost's computer systems. Streams of data flowed through his mind, as natural as thoughts. He blinked, a grin spreading across his face. Guys, I can literally see the code. It's like the machines are talking to me. Kira shimmered and vanished from sight. Her disembodied voice echoed around them. This is incredible, the ultimate infiltration tool. Will rolled his shoulders, feeling the bruises and scrapes from the battle fading away. His senses sharpened, picking up details he'd never noticed before. The tang of gunpowder, the metallic scent of blood, the hum of the outpost's life support systems. Vortis watched them warily. Your abilities will continue to grow and evolve. The potential is vast and dangerous. Dangerous how? Will asked. The Daxamites never intended for humans to wield such power. We cannot predict how your species will change in the coming generations. Aiden, his eyes still distant, suddenly snapped back to the present. Uh, guys, we've got a problem. I just hacked into Cerberus Network. Alexei's planning to sell the device to the highest bidder. Will's jaw tightened. Who are the potential buyers? A real bad bunch, terrorists, dictators, rogue states. If any of them get their hands on the device, it'll be chaos, Gunny finished grimly. We need to stop that sale, Will declared. Aiden, can you track it? Already on it, boss. Looks like it's going down on some remote island compound. Will nodded. Then that's our next stop. We're going to gatecrash Alexei's little auction. They raced back to Earth, pushing their ship to its limits. As they approached the island, Will laid out the plan. Aiden, you'll hack their security and get us inside. Kira, scout ahead and report back. Gunny, find a sniper perch and provide overwatch. I'll take point. They slipped into the compound like ghosts, but as they neared the main building, Kira reappeared, her expression grim. We've got a complication. Alexei's used the device on himself and his inner circle. They've got powers now, too. Will cursed under his breath. Then we'll just have to even the odds. They burst into the meeting room, catching Alexei and his superpowered goons by surprise. The ensuing brawl was like something out of a comic book. Gunny hurled goons through walls, Aiden hijacked their weapons with a thought, and Kira struck from the shadows. But Alexei had one final card to play. He dragged a bound and gagged Mia into view, pressing a gun to her head. Surrender, Will, or she dies. Will froze, rage and fear warring in his heart. Slowly he raised his hands. Alexei smirked, victorious. You should have joined me, Will. We could have ruled this world together, a new order with us at the top. Go to hell, Will spat. Are you first? Alexei shoved Will towards the device. I'm going to overload your brain, burn out those pesky powers. Then I'll do the same to your little team. Can't have you interfering with my plans. He hooked Will up to the machine, savoring his moment of triumph. But as he reached for the switch, Vortis lunged from the shadows. 
The two grappled, stumbling into the device. A blinding flash seared Will's vision. When it cleared, both Vortis and Alexei were gone. In the confusion, Kira sliced through Mia's bonds, pulling her to safety. Gunny made short work of Alexei's remaining forces, while Aiden locked down the compound. As the dust settled, Will stared at the smoking ruins of the device. Mia hugged him tight, but his thoughts were far away. The limiters were gone. Pandora's box had been opened. It was only a matter of time before others started developing abilities. And, with Earth's existence exposed to the galaxy once more, who knew what threats might come calling? Will hugged his daughter close, a sense of grim determination settling over him. Whatever challenges lay ahead, he and his team would face them head on. For the fate of humanity and the galaxy, there was no other choice. The world had changed in the span of a year. The limiters were gone, and with them the barriers that had held humanity back for millennia. Reports flooded in from every corner of the globe. A teenager in Tokyo who could levitate cars. A grandmother in Rio who could heal with a touch. A firefighter in New York who could walk through flames unscathed. They called them augments, and their numbers were growing by the day. Governments scrambled to keep up. Some saw the augments as a threat, a destabilizing force that needed to be controlled. Others saw them as an opportunity, a new frontier of human potential. The United Nations, still reeling from the revelation of the Daxamites experiment, formed a special task force to manage the transition. And at the head of that task force was none other than Will Adams. Keep your focus, Jean, Will said, his voice calm but firm. Your strength comes from within, not from anger. The young Chinese augment nodded, taking a deep breath. The concrete block in front of him had been giving him trouble all morning. He'd managed to crack it, but he couldn't seem to muster the force to shatter it completely. Jean closed his eyes, centering himself. Then, with a sharp exhale, he struck. The block exploded into powder. Will clapped him on the shoulder. Well done, remember, control is key. We're here to master our powers, not be ruled by them. As Jian left the training room, Kira appeared at Will's side. Even after a year, her ability to materialize out of thin air still made him jump. You're getting better at that, Will said wryly. Kira smirked. One of the perks of being invisible. You get to see people's true faces. Her expression turned serious. Aiden just intercepted a message from the Daxamite fleet. They've entered the solar system. Will's heart sank. He'd known this day would come, but he'd hoped they'd have more time. Gather the team. We need to... A deep rumble shook the building, sending them both staggering. Alarms blared as the windows rattled in their frames. Will and Kira raced outside, joined by Gunny and Aiden. Above them, the sky was filled with alien ships, their hulls gleaming in the sunlight. And in the center of the formation, dwarfing the others, was the Daxamite flagship. Attention, people of Earth. The voice that boomed from the ships was deep, resonant, and all too familiar. This is Vortis of the Daxamite Empire. Your uncontrolled evolution poses a threat to the stability of the galaxy. Surrender immediately or face annihilation. Will's fists clenched. Vortis, but how? He'd seen him vanish into the device on the moon. The reply from the UN was swift and defiant. We will not surrender our sovereignty. Earth stands united against any threat, external or internal. There was a moment of silence. Then the sky erupted in fire. The Daxamites' weapons tore through Earth's defenses like they were made of paper. Cities crumbled, forests burned, oceans boiled. Even the augments, with all their newfound power, were outmatched by the sheer scale of the onslaught. Will and his team fought with everything they had, leading strike teams of augments against the Daxamite ground forces. They took down ships, dismantled weapons, saved countless lives. But it was like trying to hold back the tide with a broom. We can't keep this up, Gunny growled, ducking behind a shattered wall as energy blasts rained down around them. We're losing ground by the minute. Will gritted his teeth. Gunny was right. At this rate, Earth would fall within days. They needed to cut the head off the snake. I have an idea, he said, but it's a long shot. 
Aiden, can you hack into the flagship's defences? Aiden's eyes unfocused as he reached out with his mind, interfacing with the Daxamite systems. I can create a temporary breach, but it won't last long. It'll have to do. Gunny Kira, I need you to create a distraction. Draw their fire away from the flagship. Kira raised an eyebrow. And what will you be doing? Will's expression was grim. I'm going to have a little chat with our old friend Vortis. The plan was set in motion. Gunny and Kira led a daring assault on the Daxamite ground forces, their augmented abilities allowing them to wreak havoc on the alien lines. Aiden, his consciousness merged with the flagship's computers, opened a brief window in the ship's defences. And Will, propelled by his enhanced strength, leaped from the tallest building he could find, soaring towards the looming ship above. He crashed through the hull, the impact barely phasing him. Alarms blared as Daxamite soldiers converged on his position, but Will was already moving, tearing through bulkheads and blast doors like they were made of cardboard. He burst onto the bridge, ready for a fight, and stopped dead in his tracks. There, standing at the helm, was a figure he'd never expected to see again. Vortis? Will's voice was a mix of shock and anger. How are you here? I saw you die on the moon. Vortis turned, his luminous eyes fixing on Will. My body was destroyed, but my consciousness was transported back to my people. A failsafe, in case our experiment on Earth went awry. Experiment? Will spat. Is that what you call unleashing a plague of superpowers on my world? You don't understand, Vortis's voice was urgent. When I returned... I tried to convince the High Council that humanity was not a threat, that you could be allies, not enemies. But the hardliners seized control. They see your evolution as a danger to the galaxy's stability. I had no choice but to lead the invasion, or they would have destroyed Earth outright. Will's head was spinning. Vortis the invader was trying to save them. For there's only one way to stop this, Vortis said. The hardliners rule by strength, to defy them is to invite execution, unless you defeat their champion in ritual combat. If you win, the moderates can regain control and call off the attack. And if I lose? Vortis's silence was answer enough. Earth would burn. Will took a deep breath. I'll do it. The arena ship was a massive construct, hovering in low Earth orbit. Will was teleported into the center of a cavernous chamber, the walls lined with Daxamite spectators. They jeered and hissed as he appeared, their alien faces twisted with disdain. Across the chamber, a door slid open. Out stepped a monster of a being, easily eight feet tall, its body a mass of rippling muscle and gleaming metal. A Daxamite super-soldier, genetically engineered for one purpose, destruction. The battle was joined, the champion was strong, fast, relentless. Every blow felt like being hit by a wrecking ball. Will's enhanced durability was the only thing keeping him alive. They traded strikes that shattered the arena floor, grappled with forces that would have pulverized ordinary men. Will could feel his body reaching its limits, his power stretched to the breaking point. The champion sensed his weakness. With a vicious backhand, it sent Will crashing into the wall, the impact leaving him dazed and reeling. The Daxamite loomed over him, its voice a guttural snarl. After I finish you, human, I will personally lead the hunt for your kind. I will start with that daughter of yours, and I will make her scream. Something snapped inside Will. A red haze descended over his vision, a berserker rage that drowned out all reason. With a roar that shook the arena, he launched himself at the champion, his fists flying in a blur of motion. The Daxamite reeled under the onslaught, its defences crumbling. Will pressed the attack, pouring every ounce of his strength, his fury, his desperate need to protect his world into each blow. And with a final earth-shattering punch, the champion fell. The arena was silent. Then, slowly, a chant began to rise from the Daxamite spectators, Honor the pact, honor the pact. Will stood over his fallen foe, his chest heaving. He looked to Vortis, who nodded solemnly. The challenge is concluded, Vortis declared. Earth has proven its worth, the invasion is over. The return to Earth was a blur. 
Will barely remembered the debriefings, the medical checks, the endless questions from the UN. All he could think about was getting home, holding his daughter, knowing she was safe. The world celebrated him as a hero, the saviour of humanity. But as Will stood on his balcony, staring up at the stars, he couldn't shake a sense of unease. The Daxamites had called humanity a threat, and with the limiters gone, with powers emerging in more and more people every day, were they right? What did the future hold for a species that had suddenly leaped forward on the evolutionary scale? And out there, in the vast reaches of space, what other dangers might be waiting? Drawn like moths to a flame to the beacon of Earth's ascension? Will didn't know, but as he looked out over the city, watching the lights flicker in the darkness, he made a silent vow. Come what may, he would be ready. Earth would be ready for whatever the universe had in store. The world was in chaos. The rubble of destroyed buildings filled the streets, a testament to the destruction wrought by the Daxamite invasion. Humanity had been shaken to its core, not just by the attack, but by the revelation of their true origins and potential. Will watched from the window of the makeshift command center as crews worked to clear the debris and restore some semblance of normalcy. The augments are growing in number every day, Gunny said, looking up from a report. People are scared. They don't know what this means for the future. Will nodded, his brow furrowed. We need to give them guidance, a path forward. We can't let fear and uncertainty tear us apart. This was the mission that drove them now. In the weeks following the invasion, Will and his team had been working tirelessly to establish a new global organization, one that could help guide humanity through this tumultuous transition and protect them from future threats both from within and without. But their efforts faced a new challenge with the rise of the Ascendants. This faction, led by a mysterious figure known only as the Prophet, preached a dangerous ideology. They believed that the Augments were the next stage in human evolution, destined to inherit the Earth and that baseline humans were obsolete, relics of a bygone era. They're gaining followers, Kira warned, her voice tight with concern. Especially among the young and disenfranchised, the Prophet's message is seductive a promise of power and purpose in a world turned upside down. Will slammed his fist on the table. We can't let them divide us, augment or baseline, we're all human. We need to stand together. But the Ascendant's rhetoric was only the spark. The tinder was the fear and resentment simmering in the hearts of many. Baseline humans looked at the augments with a mix of awe and terror, wondering if they would one day be ruled by these super-beings, and some augments... Drunk on their newfound powers, began to look down on their unenhanced brethren. It was a powder keg waiting to explode, and the match was struck when the Ascendants made their move. The attack came without warning. One moment Mia was walking home from her college classes. The next she was surrounded by a group of hooded figures. Before she could react, they jabbed her with a syringe. The world went black. When Will got the call, his blood turned to ice in his veins. The Ascendants had taken his daughter, the person he cherished most in this world, and they had done it for the cruelest of reasons. They think Mia is the key, Aiden explained, his voice shaking with anger and fear. Because she's your daughter, they believe her DNA holds the secret to unlocking the full potential of the Augments. They want to use her to create a new race of super-beings. Will's hands trembled as he loaded his weapons. Then let's show them what happens when they mess with our family. The rescue mission was a desperate gamble. The Ascendant's compound was a fortress, guarded by some of the most powerful augments they had ever faced. Even with their own enhanced abilities, Will's team found themselves outmatched. They fought their way through waves of defenders, each room, each corridor a hard-won battle. But as they reached the heart of the compound, they came face to face with a horror beyond imagining. In a cavernous laboratory, Mia lay strapped to a table, her body connected to a maze of tubes and wires, and standing over her, a twisted grin on his face, was the Prophet himself. "'Welcome, William,' he said, his voice a mocking drawl. "'You're just in time to witness the birth of a new god.' With a shock, Will recognized the face beneath the hood. It was Alexei, the man he thought dead, 
destroyed along with the device on the island. But something had changed. His eyes glowed with an unearthly light. His skin shimmered with an alien sheen. What have you done? Will demanded, his gun trained on Alexei's head. The prophet laughed, a sound that echoed with madness. I have transcended you, fool. When the device exploded, my consciousness merged with that of Vortis. I am now more than human, more than Daxamite. I am a god. He gestured to Mia's prone form. And with your daughter's DNA, I will create a new race in my image. A race of gods to rule over the ashes of the old world. Will's finger tightened on the trigger, but before he could fire, Alexei lashed out with a blast of psychic energy that sent him flying across the room. The battle that followed was cataclysmic. Alexei's powers were immense, fueled by the twisted fusion of human and Daxamite. He hurled bolts of lightning, warped reality with a thought, summoned horrors from the depths of his fractured mind. Will and his team fought with everything they had, pushing their abilities to the limit and beyond. But it wasn't enough. One by one they fell, until only Will was left standing, battered and bloody, facing down the mad god. In that moment, as he stared into the abyss of Alexei's insanity, Will had a revelation. This was the dark potential that lurked within all augments, the temptation to use their powers for domination and destruction. If they succumbed to that temptation, they would become no better than the tyrants and monsters they had fought against. Power without compassion, without restraint, was a recipe for annihilation. And in that moment of clarity, Will made his choice. With a final desperate surge of strength, he launched himself at Alexei. His hands closed around the prophet's throat, even as Alexei's mind battered at his own. Will's body began to glow, brighter and brighter, as he poured every ounce of his power into one final devastating attack. The explosion rocked the compound to its foundations. When the smoke cleared, the laboratory was a ruin. The devices and samples were destroyed, the research lost, and in the center of the crater lay two bodies. Mia, freed from her bonds, crawled to her father's side. Will lay broken, his life ebbing away, but as she cradled him in her arms, he smiled up at her, his eyes clear and calm. I saw it, Mia, he whispered, his voice fading. The future. Humans and augments working together, building a better world. A world of wisdom, of justice, of mercy. That's the dream I leave to you. Tears streamed down Mia's face as she held him close. I'll make it real, Dad, I promise. Will's hand found hers, squeezed it with the last of his strength. I know you will, because you have the greatest power of all. The power to choose, to do what's right. Remember that, always. With a final sigh, Will Adams, the man who had saved the world, passed from this life. But his legacy, his dream, lived on. In the years that followed, Mia took up her father's mantle. With Gunny, Aiden and Kira by her side, she led the new organization, guiding humanity through the challenges of the new age. It was a long road, fraught with difficulties and dangers, but guided by Will's principles, they persevered. And as Mia stood before the memorial erected in her father's honor, she read the words inscribed there, the words that had become the credo of their cause. With great power comes great responsibility. Let us use our gifts not to dominate but to serve, for in the end our humanity is not defined by what we can do, but by what we choose to do with it. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.